So a few hours ago from when I'm making this video, NASA officially announced a confirmation of yet another super exciting exoplanet that seems to be both terrestrial but also potentially habitable because of its orbit. But even more importantly, it's relatively close to us and can also be observed by a lot of telescopes including the James Webb. And so, how wonderful person this is Anton, let's discuss the discovery of Gliese 12b focusing on why this is actually kind of important, but also focusing on what this planet might be like and what the surface of this planet could maybe look like. Now obviously a lot of these questions don't actually have answers yet, but because of the way this planet orbits around the star, we're going to have a lot of these answers really soon. But to begin, ok so let's talk about the star. As in many other star systems, this is the most common star in a galaxy. This is an M-type star or a red dwarf. It's about 27% the size of the Sun and has a surface temperature of about 60% of the Sun. So in essence, not too hot and not too big. But in all of the previous cases, red dwarfs had one major problem. Very often they were exceptionally active, producing a lot of emissions and a lot of flares, and because they're generally much more magnetically active than the Sun, they would result in frequent, very very powerful X-ray flares. Like remember those flares not so long ago that the planet Earth survived? So yeah, that times 100 or even a thousand. And unfortunately this was one of the biggest disappointments with the nearby Proxima b. The closest star system to us, that's about 4.2 light years away, that potentially contains two planets and one of them is terrestrial in the habitable zone. But Proxima b is super active and produces a lot of really powerful flares. One of them possibly even fooled us into thinking it was alien communication. And these flares are powerful enough to almost completely strip the atmosphere from these planets in just a few million years. Now the most exciting star system discovered so far, Trappist-1, is also a red dwarf, but so far seems to be not as active and so there are some chances that maybe some of those planets might have something on them. But what about this newly discovered system, Gliese 12? Turns out, and this is a direct quote from the scientists, it seems to have one of the lowest stellar activity levels known for M dwarf stars. Or just to rephrase this, it actually seems to be one of the least active red dwarfs we've ever seen. Basically implying that this particular planet does actually have a chance to maybe retain some atmosphere. Now we know that in the TRAPPIST-1 system, the nearest two planets, TRAPPIST-1b and TRAPPIST-1c, appear to be barren. And that's probably because they're just so close to the star. But what about this planet? How does the orbit compare here? Well here the analysis suggests that it still seems to receive a little bit more radiation than planet Earth, actually approximately 1.6 times more, but a little bit less than Venus, maybe about 85% of what the Venus receives. Which basically implies that its equilibrium temperature is a little bit hotter than Earth, but cooler than Venus. And so here everything depends on whether it has the atmosphere. And so here on Earth, the equilibrium temperature, or basically the temperature without greenhouse effect, is approximately 279 Kelvin. But the actual temperature is a little bit higher at 287 Kelvin. But if you compare this to Venus, it's way more extreme. 328 Kelvin equilibrium, or basically if there was no atmosphere, or 730 Kelvin surface temperature because of Venusian atmosphere that creates an enormous greenhouse effect. But interestingly, this planet is somewhere in the middle. It's about 15 Kelvin lower than Venus and about 30 Kelvin higher than Earth. And even its size is a little bit smaller than Earth and a little bit bigger than Venus. And so here we have this very intriguing world and as you can see in this image, it's presented in three different types because we actually have no idea what the surface might be like. It could have no atmosphere, a little bit of atmosphere like Earth or atmosphere like Venus, which would very likely dramatically change what's happening on the surface. For example, obviously, with no atmosphere, it might resemble something like, I guess, Mars. A dry, empty world that goes through some extreme changes between the day and the night. But with a slightly thicker atmosphere, similar to Earth, here the temperatures might be a little bit higher, possibly as high as 60 degrees Celsius on the surface, which would make this a somewhat difficult world to survive on. But this planet is also very likely tidally locked, and so it would have certain locations that would be a lot more hospitable. Lastly, with the Venusian runaway greenhouse effect like atmosphere, 
or basically a very thick atmosphere, temperatures here would be pretty hot, possibly hundreds of Celsius, with extremely dry conditions and very likely something similar to what's happening on Venus. And so here we have these three options. Or maybe there's a fourth option that we cannot think of yet, because this is obviously a completely different star system. I mean, for one, maybe, this planet contains a sulfur-rich atmosphere and is thus actually cooler, bringing its temperatures much closer to planet Earth. Either way, though, this discovery is currently super exciting. It's essentially the closest transiting Earth-like exoplanet that's now officially the best potential target for the James Webb Space Telescope to start looking for habitable conditions on exoplanets. And this is even a better planet to look at than the TRAPPIST-1 planets, or the very close to us Proxima b. And that's because this planet is not transiting. The only way we can actually detect atmospheres and find out what these planets are like is of course if these planets form a shadow in front of a star. This planet does, Proxima b doesn't. And by itself this is a huge discovery, because by focusing on the light that passes through the very thin layer of the atmosphere right here, the researchers can find out everything there is to find out about this planet. At least in terms of what's actually on the surface, what kind of a light is reflected from the surface, what the atmosphere is made out of, and then start making conclusions about is this habitable, is there maybe life here, and even start using statistics in order to find out if this applies to the majority of M-type stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Because if there is something going on here, it's extremely likely that this is actually a very common phenomenon. In other words, by exploring what's happening on this planet, we can start drawing conclusions about a much wider sample of various planets discovered in the last few decades around many red dwarfs. And so out of thousands of planets discovered around various star systems out there, this one actually right now is one of the most exciting ones. With this planet discovered using the NASA's TESS space telescope, along with the MOSCAT-2 and MOSCAT-3 cameras that are part of the Subaru telescope run by the Japanese astronomers. But because this is a very, very recent discovery, there's unfortunately not much else we know. We actually don't even know the mass of this planet. It just seems to be much less massive than about 3.9 masses of planet Earth, but that doesn't tell us much. So even the mass here has not been measured yet. And that's because to measure the mass, the researchers have to use the radial velocity method you see right here, where we observe the star being pulled by the planet through observations of redshifts and blue shifts. This hasn't been done yet, so the mass is unknown. But because its orbital period is 12.8 days, we know that this is in the habitable zone. That's the usual period for planets orbiting red dwarfs in habitable zones. But only time will tell if this is going to end up some kind of a super exciting planet, or just another planet like TRAPPIST-1b and TRAPPIST-1c that seem to be completely barren. And so basically we're going to know more once we get observations from the James Webb and once additional studies come out calculating additional properties. And so until then, we're basically going to assume that it's maybe one of these three scenarios. And really only one seems to be exciting, the one with the Earth-like atmosphere. But the chance of this happening around this planet right now is kind of low. And so once there are some additional discoveries and additional calculations, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out some of the previous videos on similar discoveries in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.